Howdy folks, this is a brand spanking new Ford Mustang Mach-E long range all wheel drive, oh yeah. And in this video, we're gonna do a little review of it. And for you guys who don't know, this is a fully electric automobile, hell yeah. So where do we start? Let's start with the front, shall we? All right, in order to open the front, you have to, okay, whatever. Let's just do it the normal way, right? You have to double tap in the handle inside and then it will open and it's a fairly big frunk mm? and also it has a little drainage hole there so you can actually put something wet in here water and it will just drain itself i tried it already and well what do i say what is this nah okay well <laughs> okay so because this is an American car, you have a button here to release, to open the front <laughs> in case someone is stuck here. And this looks like a cup holder. I don't know what they are for. Uh, the, the, you can actually put in a, like a splitter here to split the, the space better. So, but we took it out to show you the full potential of it. Here we have this, the sprinkle wasser. Uh, I think this is just some, okay, whatever. I, I'm sure, oh yeah, maybe to change the light bulbs. Okay, all right. So fairly nice and large front. And this car is equipped with motorized liftgate and kick sensor. Hoo-ya! Mm, very nice in this price range. Huh? How many cars do you have uh, kick sensor? Eh? And fairly spacious trunk. We have hook here for some cargo. We have a little pocket here for some stuff. Securing hook there, securing hook here. And they are quite nice and sturdy. And 12 volt outlet here. That's good. We also have 12 out in the front. We have ski opening hole there. Very important for Norwegian. We have light there. And uh, here's the subwoofer. Nice Bango Wolfen sound system. We can also open this one. You see some stuff. I guess you can put something here. Or you can also, I guess, move this one in the lower position. But uh, yeah, we're going to leave it in the, in the top position. And I like the backup camera placement. It's placed fairly high. Many cars, they have the backup camera right here by the license plate. And it tends to gather lots of schmutz, but on this one, further up, in theory, it should be better. And the red brake calipers, oh yeah. With the uh, Rust, yeah, that is Rust. And the tire is 225-55-19, Continental Viking Contact 7. Uh, what else does it say here? Mm, okay, and then at the front, it's also the same. Bigger brake caliper here. Yeah, nice, also red, ooh, damn. Ooh, do we have any clearance here? Yeah, a little bit. And the same dimension here, Viking Contact 7 also. Just to verify, 225-55-19, it's a non-staggered non option. Uh, wow, also lots of rust there. Huh. <laughs> yeah, and then the charge port is here, only on one side. And this one will show you each segment is 20%. So right now the car is at 100%. And you can also press this one to release the charge plug. Yeah, so it's actually nice when you are charging at the fast charger. You can just press this one to stop charging. <coughs> and the door is like this. <laughs> there is no door handle on the front and the back. You see, no door handle, it's just flush. Not even door handle pops out. So you just press the button here to open the door. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do the ice braking test, but it should still be pretty good. Um, see here we also have some, some pin code entering. I never tried it, but you can use pin code to enter the car. Uh, but most people, they would just set up, there's an app on the phone that you use as a key, and then you technically don't need the key fob, but I always bring the key fob. It's kind of big and chunky, but okay. So in case the app is not working or something, so remember to A, B, C, always bring key. Yeah. And I'm gonna show you again. So you can see now it's like semi, in a semi open closed stuck state. So you just have to press again to open it. And you see that, well, let me see if I can see it in time. So when you press it open here, da, 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 da. okay, let me try again. You see, that's like the, if you know Model X, it has this ice breaker type that pushes the door out. So supposedly, if the, if the car is full of ice, the ice breaker should be powerful enough to push the, the, the door open. Let's, let me try something. If I push kind of like this, let me try to feel the force. Whoa, whoa, okay. Let me try to 
I want to see if I can force it. Whoa, that, that, is, that is pretty strong. That is very strong, man. Um, uh, no, I, I can't hold it back. It means that, that that tiny motor actuator is super strong. It should break any ice that covers the car because that's, that's one concern people have. The rear door doesn't have that tiny tap there. So you just have to press the button and then I, I, I guess you carefully gr grab this one, something like this. <laughs> and the door hand, by the way, is this style. Same inside here. Just press this. You see, this is the door handle to open and close the door. So you get used to it. Yeah, it's uh, first day. I was like a little bit, oh, whoa, where is it? But when when wifey was riding me, I didn't tell her how it worked, and she figured out by herself that she just has to pull this one. So it it works. It works just fine. Uh, and in the back you have the shark fin antenna. <laughs> and the back seat, let me try. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. Um, yeah, okay height here. I feel like it could have been maybe a little bit taller, but it's li at least it's not too flat because some cars, especially sedan, they tend to have too low seat. But this one is acceptable. Oh, lots of leg room. You see? I'm 173 centimeters, so people with long legs, they tend to need more knee space like this. And I really have to go really far with my knees. So they have shaped the seat to be like this. Yeah, we have a little pocket there. Uh, that's nice. Let's check now the door. We have, is that tweeter? Oh yeah, Bango Olufsen speakers. We have cup holder, well, uh, door pocket here. Let's do a knocking. Mostly nice and soft materials. See, I'm gonna show you here. Nine! What? Can't open this one. I'm stuck. Someone call 911. Driver door open. <laughs> I can't. I... Okay, anyway. All right, so let's try. Head, oh, okay. Not the best headroom. It, it's not even one fist of a headroom here. We're talking about uh, two fingers. That's it for 173 centimeters. I don't know how much that is in Imperial. Do, 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 do. A middle arm, a middle uh, headrest. Also, this one becomes a middle armrest. <coughs> oh, let me just, oh, is, how is it? There, there, there. With a cup holder, alles good. And then we can also pull this one to get the ski, uh, ski opening. Yeah, very important for Norwegians. Okay, put it up. <sighs> Um, but I have to say the seats are kind of flat. You see, there's almost no side bolts, there's no sides bolts. It's just kind of you know, American style, flat seat for people with big ass like me. Yes, I like big butts and I cannot lie. Wow, there's almost no side support here, <laughs> but at least it's perforated and it feels great to sit in it. And then, okay, furthermore, uh, here we have, this is just for securing, uh, if you have that, uh, or, or I don't remember how it was. Yeah, but we have light here. Nice, we have hook here. We can have this one hand to hold on to. Please try again. No, I, no, cancel. The voice control kicked in. Make a phone call, say call. Nine. Name of the contact. Nine, go. Find a no, no. Cancel. Okay, but here you see air vents and one USB-C, one USB-A. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And the front seats are nice, but American style with not too much side support. At least you have electric adjustable seats with memory, three settings in the front. And uh, on the passenger side, we have also have electric adjustable stuff, but not memory. So let me recall. There we go. But um, the steering wheel is manual. Where is it? Where is it? Just have to feel it. What? Oh, it's over here. Okay. Just do it like this. At least it goes up and down, in and out. 
And here we have door pockets. Fairly nice, but I feel like this Bango Ulusen speaker is kind of in the way. Yeah. And then we can do the same knocking here, I guess. Well, let's see. Okay. Door handle. And there we have the Bango Ulusen sound bar. I think it goes all over there. Yeah. Awesome sound from Bangu Lutsen. I love it. Yeah, many people ask me, hey, how is the sound here compared to Model 3? Uh, I feel like it's neck on neck. Okay, we're gonna try to play it. Uh, let me see, is this one active? Oh, it's actually active. It's some infrared stuff, supposedly for the for the uh, autopilot system that they will be implementing later. And then this one, ooh, what, what, what was this? Is this, is this carbon fiber? Really? Let me use my right hand. Oh. Yeah, I think it's carbon fiber. Oh, nice. And we have a power start stop button. There is no start engine button. So let's fire it up. Boom. Then we see some Mustang stuff here. Driver door open. Okay, okay. Okay, I have to say that the dings with this car is. Dun, 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 dun. The dings on this car is like a video game. And one thing I don't like, though, and maybe it's just me, but uh, let me try to illustrate it. I prefer having the steering wheel kind of like uh, this ish low. Let me see, is that the low? Yeah, this the. Uh, you see, that's the high setting. I prefer having it something like this ish. Let me just. And let's say my head is around here, and you see that sometimes I have to kind of bow down to see all the stuff in the instrument cluster. Maybe it's just me, but. It was a little bit clumsy. Of course, you can always adjust the, the steering wheel up, but then the steering wheel might not be in the optimal position for, for me grabbing it, but for visual, yes. So here we see what I like about the instrument cluster. It, it always shows you estimated range, stellar charges over uh, displayed in percentage. And here we have outside temperature. Also this one pedal driving is enabled and also <laughs> ground speed. Is that a joke? Huh? The speed is also digitally shown here. And then we have some auto steer stuff here. So I like it. I wish there was a little bit more information about the trip meter because the trip meter is then displayed in this big ass screen here. So <laughs> there's the only way to display this in here. And then we have this volume knob. Okay, you guys want to see me use it? Yeah, so let me see. Well, let me play some music. All the, okay, this one. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. We're playing some music now. And what I like about the sound is that it has nice and deep bass. But it's not that loose, it's nice and firm, just the way I like it. Mm. Yeah, so it's Sunday now, so maybe I shouldn't play it too loud. And let me go quick walkthrough about the whole... Yeah, you want to know about the knob. Yes, you can twist it. What, did I pause it? Yeah, I pause it. And then you can also press this one to mute it. Then it's just audio off. And then uh, here we have settings. This one is always visible. We have the, the setting for seat heater. What I don't like about this setting is that, um, you see, this is a toggle button for steering wheel heater. This is a toggle button. Well, it's, it, this is for adjusting um, fan speed. And then you can put it auto. What I like about this auto setting here is that you have automatic setting, but you can choose whether you want it to be strong medium or soft and then it will just do the rest for you that is brilliant and the temperature you can be adjusted like this you can just tap it or you can also do the slider here and the nice thing that the ford specifically designed is that you don't always have to be here to do the slider once you are initiated you can slide here see that's nice but there's always a butt crack somewhere right okay the butt is that what i don't like is this one here should be a toggle button the seat heater. I mean, it's just one, two, three anyway, just like this one is one, two, three, right? So, but then this one, you have to click here and then slide it. And then sometimes I'm kind of disturbed by, I'm driving and then I have to turn on this one. So, but this can be fixed, of course. And you see that right now we have the, the USB music here. If you press here, that one will go to the main screen here. And then this one will be displayed. And then if you try something like, uh, uh, what is this one? I don't remember. Is it radio? Oh, okay, radio. Then you have the radio settings there. And then you can also maximize this to 
even use more space and then you see the icons down here become smaller uh, okay um, let's try this one and let's see what happens if you do it in this this app then it becomes smaller yeah and then you can unmaximize it and then you can also just slide this one up to make it visible here and then you can also for example um, we don't uh, we don't care about this one then you can no no what we don't care about this one so you can just uh, remove it there so it's like a quick quick button here and then here we have more settings um, drive mode yeah untamed then it becomes this is like a sport mode whisper is the silent mode and active i don't remember the difference between them i usually maybe the active is the eco mode i'm not sure i've been using the whisper mode and here we also have propulsion sound which is fake engine sound i'm going to show you later once we start driving it and we have the setting for oh, okay we have the setting for oh, uh, yeah i see i keep pressing this one it should be a toggle button right well, no you have to press here and what well, is this a modal uh, screen yeah okay Ma in many other systems like in the tesla you can just press outside this, this box but here you have to close it but this is something they can tune of course uh, we have backup camera 360 camera that's nice perspective though is a little bit weird but they chose to have it widescreen and then you can choose to switch here or something yeah there, there, there you go so all right and then you can exit the 360 camera there there's some parking stuff here and one thing i want to show you is that in driver assistance okay you have auto haul and you can switch up traction control but uh, if we go to additional settings the cruise control has three different modes you see you can have it on normal cruise control which means that it's not uh, adjusting adaptive it's non-adaptive it's just dumb cruise control it will crash in the car in front if you don't pay attention adaptive mode is then the normal one and then intelligent cruise control is that it follows the speed limit uh, everything you can see here yeah yeah it follows the speed limit but i use the adaptive cruise control uh, but when the radar is blocked and the radar is not heated by the way then you can switch to this one okay then, then there's some some dings and some stuff and <laughs> and then you can use cruise control even when the radar is blocked that's nice tesla can't do that for example M most cars i've been testing have some kind of normal cruise control and this is going to show you that you have so many settings here like the almost endless how many settings you have really um wrong way alert wow really huh damn that is quite impressive okay yeah so uh lots of stuff here settings and that was for just control the vehicle you have loading 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 dun, 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 dun. yeah easy entry you see yeah i disabled that one so lots and lots of settings and maybe more uh, settings and more user interface will come what i don't like is that um okay the charting screen here is pretty shitty uh, there is no there is no charging screen uh, like in a tesla you can just press somewhere in the corner you see here there's a battery icon there but what kind of battery is that really because it seems like it's not 100 percent right and you see here well so is it this one um and then if you go to um if you go to charge here you see this screen but that's pretty much it you you don't see any charging speed number of kilowatts no you can't uh, change the charge level uh, you can do some kind of departure set departure times here yes that's nice it actually works but you have to be plugged in for the for in order for the car to preheat so that's a bummer and there is no keep climate on like in yeah, tesla or some other cars so that's a nice feature i want in in winter so that hopefully they will implement it uh so with valet mode is here so there's lots and lots of settings but i think i've used almost enough time with this uh and also we have some stuff here okay well no no oh, yeah when it comes to smoothness not the best and also remember that this one is not final so for example ford told me that they're still working on it and still improving it so if i try navigation navigation keep crashing on this car it worked the first day so they used garmin and then dun, 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 gone yeah but okay anyway enough about that one infotainment uh, yeah lots of time <laughs> on it we have some steering wheel buttons here they are nice they 
they don't feel too premium, but at least. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, 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 no, 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 okay. And there's voice control. So if you say, okay, Ford, you see, yeah. So I, I remember when I said, oh, um, I can't, okay, afford anything. Yeah, then, yeah. So <laughs> um, I should try, well, okay. Um, we have buttons here for, for adaptive cruise control and stuff. And also this one is nice for disabling lane keeping assist. So you can enable and disable it. Yeah. Uh, steering wheel, nice to touch, like it. Mm? You, you remind you that we're driving a Mustang here. Yeah? And uh, what I like is here. Okay, this is the center console part and you can charge your phone here. It takes fairly large phones, but not too big. You see, I don't know what happens if you have too big phone and uh, can you take out, well, oh, it seems loose. Let me take it out. Ah, okay, there's a charging pad. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, and then, the, oh, oh, they they bothered to put a Mustang logo there behind the pad. Okay, because this one, I guess if you, your phone is too big, then it won't fit. And also it has one USB-C, one USB-A. I tested the USB-C. It only gives you about one amp. So it doesn't give you more than that. So it's not too fast when it comes to charging. And then here we have a gear selector and it has also an L mode. And the L mode is supposedly for right, low mode. Uh, acts more like hill descent mode. So that's nice. And even if you're in the drive now, also nice feature is that when you just power off the car, it will automatically go in park. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. okay, let's fire it up again. And then one thing I like is that you see here, um, the center part here is not too big. So that's my personal opinion because many cars like, um, for example, the Leaf, the um, e-tron and uh, Polestar, they have this big ass console in the middle here. And then your knee gets kind of like cramped in here. And I'm not that uh, tall person, but you can imagine a tall person, how cramped it is. Some leaf owners, they were actually considering removing some of that plastic beam because it was getting in the way. But here, nice and open. I like that shit. And also another thing I like is under here, I'm gonna try to show you. Under here, we have a nice open shelf for putting stuff there. And not only that, but Ford, they also, included an edge here so stuff don't slide out if you buy a Taycan you also get this kind of shelf but not the edge here then you have to pay extra 250 euros or something to get that edge <laughs> but okay it doesn't stop there here we have a center console with more space uh, do we have 12 volt outlet in the front and very nice and open space here so I feel like you have lots of space for your stuff for long trips. Man, I forgot to tell you, this car has heated windscreen. It's priceless to have heated windscreen in winter, in Norwegian winter. You can see, can you kind of see it? Uh, yeah, you can kind of see the, the wires in the windscreen. Oh, hard to, uh, hard to focus. There, 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 kind of, yeah. So very nice. And that's the microphone for the Bluetooth. And then the sun visor goes down like this. We have makeup light, great. It pivots, but it doesn't extend. And then the same on this side, we also have makeup light here. Yeah. And then here we have the SOS button. We have light stuff there for sunglasses. And you see those blue lights here at night. It shines down to the middle console here, so you can see the buttons, you can see your phone here with the drinks here, so that's really nice. Seat belt can be adjusted up and down. And the headroom here is just simply amazing. See, more than a fist of headroom in the front. It's like double fist. Wow. All right, now we're gonna take it for a spin. I'm gonna give you my driving impressions of it. So I've been spending almost one week with this car now, but it's been a little bit on and off because of bad weather, but at least now it's okay. And the tarmac is a little bit wet, but we should have okay grip. So let's start with the dry mode. So we have in the whisper mode, the run over some bumps. Okay, when you flow it here, you see we have that artificial lag. 
But what if I put it on tame? Now it should be the sport mode. Still has that artificial lag, but let's turn on the propulsion sound then. So you can hear that it does the whole humming, fake humming noise thing. And also at low speed you hear that Vess. That's Vess. Plus the humming sound. And then thing changes when you speed up. Then the humming, the, the vest disappears, but the humming is still there. But there is just a gentle humming sound. And then when you floor it, you get that one. So I haven't tested if that sound also is, is like sounds outside or if it's just internal. But let's see, what about the active mode? What is that? What kind of mode is that? Oh, uh, I should change my mind. Go over here. It's Sunday, so there's almost no traffic here. Yeah, okay, so in whisper mode, for example, that fake sound is then less audible. Let me go a little bit around here. Sorry, guys, we just go a little bit back and forth here. So, um, drive a little bit in the roundabout. I feel now that <laughs> the seat doesn't give me that much side support when I go on the roundabout. Yeah, in whisper mode, it's almost as if this one has no meaning, the propulsion sound or the fake sound, whatever you call it. So, but again, you can use untamed. Drive around here a little bit. So, again, uh, how, is the, how is the suspension? How are the seats? So many people ask me, how are the seats? Well, they are kind of that, that flat type, American style flat type. So, uh, personally, I would love to have a slightly more side support. So... Oh, now we are getting stuck behind some uh, drivers and also okay and over here yeah uh, i can't test the uh, what oh the instrument cluster changed when you had the untamed mode ah, okay okay but on that everything is just the same and yeah so the seats they are nice and comfy for long trips i don't feel any weird uh, back ache or something from from driving so i can spend a lot of time in the seats so that's good at least and also they don't feel sweaty or something weird like that if I sit too long on it. So let's see. And then as for the suspension though, it's a bit over. Oh, you see, okay, that was really bad potholes. And there's gonna be some more bumps there. So I feel like the suspension is not the most comfortable one. For example, in iPace and uh, Taycan and e-tron, it's more comfy. It seems like it goes a little bit more bouncy over the bumps. Uh, could be maybe because of short wheelbase. Uh, is it going to change lane or? Sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to understand if these buses are just pulling. Okay, he wanted to change lane, you see? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to understand if the bus wants to change lane or not. But that's, by the way, the BID bus, fully electric. So, um, yeah, not super comfy uh, suspension. But at least it kind of goes over the bumps kind of nice. You don't, it's not like Ugh! in a Model 3, especially performance. Man, that is just lack of, <laughs> of comfort. But here at least it's some, but not the best. But uh, we just happened to pass a corner now. But I feel like, you know, for example, a corner, the corner has even weirder bump. It seems like the suspension is not that well tuned against the heavier uh, electric version of corner or something. So, so uh, how should I rate the suspension? It's like in the middle, let's say uh, on a scale from one to nine, then I would say the suspension for me gets around six. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's okay, but not the best. Um, okay, let's just... <laughs> okay, now we are gonna go on the highway. Let me see. So, I mean, people wanna buy a Ford Mustang. They probably want to throw it around corners. Oh, oh, that's, that was nicely done. So you see, it was a little bit slippery. And I feel like, you know, the, the, the all-wheel drive system here seems to be pretty well balanced between the front and the rear motor. So uh, I, don't, I don't feel like it's front or rear bias. It's more like 50-50, which is just the way I like it. Uh, there is no setting to change it, but it works just fine. No worries. 
Oh, I feel now that the untamed mode is more the untamed mode is more uh, more responsive on the throttle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been using the quiet most most of the time. But it's just the way the throttle has been uh, tuned. I still don't think it gives more power. Well, we we could find out, I guess, if you hammer it. Let's go now on the on the motorway. And okay, this car also has one pedal driving, and the region is very good. I'm gonna show you now. If I region now, okay, well, we have almost 100%. Yeah, that's the problem right now. But it uses friction brakes if you have 100%. I hear the whole scraping at low speed, so. It's like e-pedal or it's like i3 also uses that so at least you get um, consistent well region yeah when you are 100% in a Tesla if you have 100% then then um, it um, it doesn't region and you get inconsistent the driving feel yeah put it like that okay let me see now I'm gonna get over here on the one of the middle lanes and I'm going to activate cruise control you like this do it like this and then just set the speed and now wait hold on there now the the auto steer system is active and i don't have to touch the steering wheel but after 15 seconds it will bug me and then you will have shark attack yeah <laughs> okay let's hammer it so uh, fairly nice and fast, but I feel like it's not as fast as some of the other cars. For example, Polestar or uh, the Volvo XC40. I mean, when you when you floor it, I mean it, it kind of moves, but uh, feel like it's not as fast as the other alternatives. And of course, way slower than Tesla's. Yeah, even the the, the long range, the non-performance is faster than this one. But I think people who buy this car, they might not be looking for the performance. If you want the performance, you have to go for the, what's it called again? RS? No, wait, that's Audi, right? GT version? Yeah, that will be more more beefy than this, but okay, but compared to fossil car, yes, it is It is fairly fast, schnell, yeah. Um, uh, but one thing I have to tell you about the, the cruise control, I mean, the, um, the adaptive cruise control is that, let me just set the speed now. Um, wait, uh, da, da, da. okay, uh, let me set the speed is that when it goes on the highway oh okay it's not active i forgot <laughs> it will just kind of activate by itself once if once it figures out that uh, the cruise control can be activated okay let me re reactivate it you just have to give it some time there now it's active there is no audio noise i mean there's no audio feedback that is active you just have to look in the display but when it comes to curves like this it tends to do jerky wheel movements. Okay, maybe not, it doesn't happen now, but I've experienced it many times before. And also, once it rains and it gets dark and there is no street lights, then the system really struggles. Then it actually doesn't work. Unlike Tesla. Tesla will, will see in the dark and you can use autopilot even in the dark. But with this car, mm, mm, no. So that's a little bummer, but there's that means that there is room for improvement in uh, in that department okay now let's go back uh, should we switch off okay i'm going to switch off now i'm going to use the whisper mode switch off the untamed and then get uh, also a little impression of how it is in the quiet mode you see pretty good region okay we're down to 97 percent now so it's not regioning a little bit more than we initially and it also has the 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 auto hole yeah and the all-wheel drive system is always nice. I like it. Once they got used to all-wheel drive for electric motors, or electric cars, then it's almost no way back, right? Okay. Maybe I should have some ASMR. I just shut up and then you guys can listen to the sounds. So yeah, uh, so it's nice. I like the auto uh, system here for climate control. Uh, the one, like I mentioned it, what I don't like is that if you want to turn on the heated steering wheel and then you want to turn on the heated uh, seat, you, you kind of you kind of have to focus a little bit more. You know, you, you take, you focus away from the car and you have to like this and then, yeah, you see? So I want the toggle button there really. Okay, let's go. 
it's still fun. Well, well, let's try the active mode then. Is that, is that gonna make any difference? Okay, let's see. Huh. Not sure though what it does. Yeah. I mean, there's a text, but it does it. It doesn't really tell you what the diff what what the difference is. But okay, except that you know that the untamed is the sport mode. That's it. If you use the untamed mode now, yeah, we, there's still no sound. You can use the untamed mode and without having that uh, annoying fake engine sound, which is just uh, not that that nice look sounding. Yeah. But let me see. Can you use the backup? Okay. You, know, you can't use the camera while you're driving. All right. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just uh, exit here, go uh, via... We're gonna try to find some bumpy roads and I think we're gonna find it if we drive towards uh, Ikea because I know they have some some road construction over there, some Baustelle, we can check it out. So let's see now. So, and also the noise level is quite good. And then when it comes to range, okay, noise, I haven't measured it yet, but my impression is that it, it's like in the middle there. It's like a leaf or an eagle roughly like that it's not super quiet but it's fairly quiet not also not as quiet as an e-tron just saw an e-tron now um and uh, yeah as for range okay i would only test it in winter and it was kind of bad weather but it seems like uh, it would be able to do uh, well in winter about 350 kilometers maybe even 400 if it's not that shitty weather uh, it was frozen rain the day when i tested it uh, and in summer, I think 500 kilometers would be possible, but this is the all-wheel drive system. If you go for the rear-wheel drive, it, it would be more efficient for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And then you will get supposedly 610 kilometers of range. And uh, yeah, I haven't tested it, so I'm not gonna talk too much about stuff I haven't tested. But okay, 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 okay. all right. So over here, it's quite bumpy. Let me see, see, I'm gonna regen. Okay, nice. All right. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm in the untamed mode, so a little bit my foot is not tuned towards the, the throttle response. So I was like, Ugh! but you get used to it. Yeah. Oh, of course, if it's a problem, you can just switch over to whisper mode, for example, or active mode. Yeah, whatever. So uh, let me just switch to untamed mode now. Actually, uh, I've been using whisper mode most of the time, so maybe I should go for the one I, I'm used to. So, um, yeah. I'm not sure what else I should say. Uh, the wipers work okay, but on the other hand, I haven't really tried the wipers in really harsh conditions and too cold weather like we've been getting in the past. And now we are getting uh, wind from the south, so it's not that uh, bad anymore. Try to, oh, yeah, I'm gonna overtake that Toyota. This is the bus lane, by the way. In Norwegian, in Norway, EVs are allowed to drive on bus lanes, so yes, it's not illegal overtake, it's actually fully legal. And then I have to turn back here, yes. But uh, yeah, so, you know, this car, I guess I should summarize. I mean, I can't really give you guys all the info in one video. I mean, that's too much, but trying to summarize now, I mean, if you want to know more, you have to watch the, all the other videos on specific topics like charging and range test and yellow test and whatever. But on, on general basis though, I would say that um, it's a pretty good car for the money. It doesn't really stand out or anything. I mean, it has, good speakers it it actually charges fairly fast it has pretty good range pretty good um, noise levels uh, fairly okay uh, interior not the worst not the best not the, the worst you know the worst <laughs> the, uh, no but um and what else so so in a way yeah it's not it doesn't it doesn't score uh, nine out of nine in one one metric but it might score six or seven out of nine in many metrics and that means that this car is then a good car for the money because you also have to consider how much of this cost because this one all-wheel drive with a big battery costs around 600k in Norway with this kind of spec but it starts at 400k for the rear-wheel drive 75 kilowatt hour battery that is called standard range so uh, if you don't need that cra crazy range and if you don't need all-wheel drive, then you can get a pretty good car for the money. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's like, I think if, if I would give it some kind of Tesla Bjorn rating, I would probably not give it a highly recommended rating, but more like a, a recommended. Actually, maybe 
tipping slightly towards higher uh, high highly recommended you know between highly recommended and recommended it's like not two thumbs up but one and a half thumb up something uh, when it comes to consumption it seems like it's a little bit thirsty ish but not super thirsty depends it's kind of hard to measure it now in winter i have to try it in summer uh, and also the, the the software seems a little bit buggy but hopefully that can be fixed so yeah um, hopefully i've given you guys a good enough impression but in the end of the day i can't really tell you which car you should buy you have to figure it out by yourself based on all the other tests and based on what i show you and then you can figure out if you want to buy this one or uh, id4 or model y or model 3 or whatever you know you have to decide but um, remember that this car is a fairly affordable car uh, you can't really compare it to for example um, an ipace or uh, e-tron because they are more expensive but they might also be better in some regards but what i really like about this one is that it has pretty good charging speed and also pretty good range not as good as tesla no but for this kind of money yeah so i'm um, just gonna stop here and uh, that's gonna be it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later